Right here, let me do it. Let me see. The pineal gland. Mm -hmm. It would be like right here. What's that little lump right there? That big old. It's this guy. So yeah, yep, that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right here. Uh, it's not really yeah, there, but I mean, one. it's there. Yeah, any questions from the inside? Like a little the chunk of it. A little, a little, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead just a little bit. Um, real quick, what comprehensively do we call the coverings of the brain? Meninges. The meninges, very good. Hence the term like meningitis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the meninges is made up of three separate layers. You guys need to know all three of these, one of which is very hard to pin, so it will probably not be pinned. Okay. But two of them will certainly be pinned. Okay. The two that will be pinned are the innermost layer and the outermost layer. So starting with the outermost, this leathery layer that covers the entirety of the brain, this is going to be called the dura mater. Okay, you should have a piece of dura mater in That's the bag with mater. the brain. Okay, make sure we can identify that, see what the texture is. Yeah. Dura mater. Means tough mother. Dura mater. Oh, that is, it's like a leather. Is it it's tough? It is tough, like leather. Okay, very good with that. Now, deep to this is going to be a layer known as the arachnoid layer, okay? This is going to be loose connective tissue, kind of looks cobwebby, hence the arachnoid layer. This is the one that's gonna be extremely hard to pin and will probably not be pinned other than what's below this layer, if we even do that, okay? Okay, and then the deepest layer is gonna be the shiny film that is on the brain itself. This is the pia mater. This is a very delicate layer. Um, and it is what gives it that sheen uh, that, that you see. Okay, if not, it would kind of be more of a matte color. Okay, so once again, we could just stick a pin anywhere in the brain and say, what is this thin layer? And on top, your answer would have to be pia mater. Understood? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Now, let's go ahead and look at the inferior portion of the brain. So put it back together, we're gonna go over some nerves, as well as some endocrine. So we're looking at the bottom portion of the brain. Now this ties into nerves because there are four total cranial nerves that you need to know for your nerve pin test. That is going to be the first three, which is olfactory, optic, and oculomotor, as well as the tenth, which is vagus. Okay? The vagus, of course, will be in the cat. Um, for this one, Let's go ahead and run through the first three uh, cranial nerves. By the way, just a general question. What is the difference between a cranial nerve and every other nerve? The cranial nerve comes directly from the brain. The cranial nerve starts from the brain itself, okay? It comes straight out of the brain, whereas everything else goes to the spinal cord and then to the brain. Does that make sense? Hmm. All right, so number one is going to be the olfactory nerve. The olfactory bulb sits right on top of the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Okay, and then the olfactory tract leads to the olfactory bulb. Identify those real quick. Olfactory nerve, olfactory tract. Okay, the flappy part, that's the olfactory bulb. Olfactory nerve, the bulb. Oh, I'm sorry, olfactory bulb. Mm -hmm. And the olfactory tract, is that tract? Is, is, this, is, it, is there two or was that together? No, there are two. Okay. Two separate ones, because you have two different nostrils. Wow. Good with olfactory nerve? And All right, we'll then move on to the optic side. nerve. Now, technically optic this entire nerve. thing is the optic nerve. The answers that we want for your pin test so that we can make sure you're identifying the different parts properly are going to be as such, okay? The optic tract is going to lead to the optic chiasma. The chiasma is the crossing over section, mm. okay? And then the optic nerve then will travel out from there um, through the optic frame and into the eyeball itself. Okay? So make sure we can identify those three parts really quick. So okay. optic, optic tract, optic chiasma, and then optic the optic chiasma, optic chiasma and then optic tract. The chiasma is the actual bump where it goes. Well, the, the cross. Okay, yeah. I guess you could say. Yeah. Where, where it forms the X. Yeah. They did good except for they cut this piece off. Optic tract. That's good. Optic chiasma. Optic nerve. Good 
Good? Mm -hmm. All right. And the last one is going to be these little flappy things right here. They're not nearly as, um, what would you say, as thick as the olfactory or the optic nerves. These are going to be the oculomotor nerves. Mm. Okay? These might have been removed when we removed the inferior portion of the skull. Um, or the, excuse me, the portion of the skull is sits inferior to the brain off. Uh, they might have gotten disconnected, but most of the brain should have these still in there. Okay, so trying to find your ocular motor nerves. That's what moves your mandibular stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. That's amazing. Those little things. So your eyes are actually, your eyes are actually connected yep, to yep, that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, ocular motor nerves. Okay, questions on those three things. Okay, now let's hit some endocrine uh, while we're down here. Go ahead and show me, their pituitary gland is off of every single one of these frames, right? Mm -hmm. It sits down in that uh, cella turcica, right? It kind of grabs it, and when we remove the skull, it just pulled it right off, okay? So what we'll be doing is putting a pin and say what goes here, or even better, if we can actually find the pituitary gland, we'll pin it right where it should go, okay? So just to let you guys know, the pituitary gland is going to sit just behind, or posterior, <coughs> to the optic tracts and anterior to the ocular motor nerve. So it's, it's right there. So it would be like right in between. You can okay, kind so of see where it would go right there. there. See how this that's flat right there? Yes. yes. So it would kind of just sit right there. And what is that again? That is the pituitary so, end. It would be really right there. Yeah, the pituitary gland, where I'm pointing now. And then go ahead and give me a reference to the pineal gland while we're doing endocrine. Pituitary gland is our master gland, and the pineal gland makes what class? From lecture. Melatonin. Good, melatonin. It's all out of whack right now. It's the same exact side of the clock. Yep. Our synthesis. I would like to go over this with the other people. Do like a deep break. Our production of melatonin production. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe All right, that. Have you ever been over the digis? The deer ran that way and then I hit it on my head. That's insane. Yeah. Let's go ahead and go over this part of the brain while we're looking at the inferior portion. Okay. <clears throat> This here is the medulla oblongata, this entire section that I'm highlighting. Okay, wait real quick to refine this one, so I'm gonna throw something else in with it, okay? This is what makes alligators so ornery, and we all know that alligators live in ponds, P-O-N-S, ponds. Okay, so go ahead and identify those two real quick, both from the outside and from that cut that you made. So from the outside and from the inside. You can just keep that one. No, because I like you pointing in the <laughs> okay, so mandula oblongata, pons, spinal cord, spinal cord, and pons. Mandula oblongata is what makes alligators so ornery, and they live in pons. Pons. Cool. Yeah. All right. And what is this back here? Spinal cord. Spinal cord. Do not say the B word. Okay, if one person does that, I'm failing you out of anatomy class. <laughs> Technically, these are part of the B word. This is absolutely not, okay? That's the spinal cord. Spinal cord. Gray matter versus white matter, I highly, highly, highly doubt that we pin. It would just have to say what type of brain matter is this. And the best place to pin this, or the best place to differentiate this, would be in the cerebellum. Okay, good. And that white matter portion, right, that myelinated, those myelinated nerves are called the arbor vitae. Okay, where there's a tree of life. You will, you will write arbor vitae for your test. Okay, so while we're looking there, go ahead and find the cerebellum from the inside as well as the arbor vitae, which is the white portion. Arbor vitae, which is these. Looks like coral to me, like a tree. Yeah, yeah it does. Mm -hmm. And then what was the other one? This is the cerebellum, it is the hole, and then the white in it is the myelinated arbor vitae. 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 Vitae.
so tired. <laughs> All right. So, class, we're going to do a big chunk up at the front, and then I'm going to turn you guys loose. This is going to cover literally the rest of what's in the brain. Okay? So, I'm going to go over it up front, and then we're going to do it together, and I'm going to turn you loose to go over um, to go over this stuff. So, now that we're looking from the inside, what did I teach you guys is always our landmark. The pineal gland. Good, the pineal gland. So, we're going to find the pineal gland, and we can base it's everything right else there. off of that. Pineal gland, this in this picture, is right where the red pointer is. Okay? So we already know that sitting just posterior in the sheep to the pineal gland is going to be this, which collectively is called what? The Good, the corpora quadridemina. Okay, the this is the superior colliculi. This is the inferior colliculi of the corpora quadridemina. Okay. Now, sitting anterior to this, we have the thalamus, not thymus. T h a l a m u s thalamus. Okay. And sitting inferior to that, which is going to be right here, is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, hypothalamus. Okay. Now, two big structures that are relatively easy to find are going to be this and this. Okay, The one that sits on the bottom is called the fornix, F-O-R-N-I-X, fornix. And the one that sits more superior is going to be the corpus callosum or corpus callosum. That's a tomato tomato situation. Okay. So, thalamus, hypothalamus, okay, I can reference that from where the pineal gland is, okay, and then we have fornix, corpus callosum. Now, between the corpus callosum and the fornix, we have a fluid-filled space, okay, this is going to be called the lateral ventricles, okay? The lateral ventricles, there are two of them because there is a separation between the left and the right. The separation is called the septum pellucidum. This is going to be a thin membrane. Check on both your sides real quick uh, while you guys are with me and see if you have the septum pellucidum intact. Maybe One that. side probably has it intact. This one would say. Yeah, it would be right in there. I don't have it intact. Yeah, so since it's cut off just a little bit, we could see it on the right, mm -hmm. right there. Septum pellucidum. This. That always looks strange to me to see it there and over there. Yeah. Okay, this is perfect. Right here, septum yeah. pellucidum. Yeah. Right there. Oh, so. Yeah, don't break it. Okay. So that covers two of the four ventricles. Those are the lateral ventricles that are separated by the septum pellucidum. By the way, what type of fluid, I say this is a fluid filled space, what type of fluid fills that space? Cerebrospinal fluid, okay? Very good. So, the third ventricle is going to sit just superior to the thalamus, okay? And then we have a tract that's relatively easy to see. It's gonna go behind, it's gonna go between the thalamus and the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. We're going all the way to here, right where I'm tracing. This might be kind of hard to see in your um, in your brains if you didn't get a cut perfectly down the middle. Okay, It'll kind of, did. the whole tube will did. be in one side or the other if you didn't cut perfectly down the middle. Okay, but this is where it runs. And what would this be called in the class? Do you guys remember? Okay, there's two names. It's either the aqueduct of Sylvius or the cerebral aqueduct. Okay, either one's fine. An aqueduct literally means like a. What would be the definition of aqueduct? Waterway. Like when you hear about like Rome, they're like, yeah. oh, they made aqueducts. It's literally like a tube where water runs. Yeah. Through. Okay. So it makes sense. Okay. And then that leads us to the last ventricle and the last part of the brain that we have to go over, which is the fourth ventricle. Okay. Now, as I go through these, I want you to find them with me on your brains. Okay. We're going to start all the way back at the pineal gland. So find our landmark, the pineal gland. Bunk. Okay, sitting just posterior to that, we have the corpora quadrigemina. Make sure you can identify the superior and inferior colliculi superior of the corpora quadrigemina. Colliculi and inferior colliculi. If you have questions, please stop and slide down a little bit. You get a lot of money for this. I get paid a lot of money for this. 
Flashcards for right the last chapter. I have my flashcards, so I'm just not. I don't feel like I'm prepared. Mm. Everything going on with his pap, and then have to clean out the house and mm. all that. So that's a lot. All right. So we found the four four five Gemini. Let's go ahead and reference back to the pineal gland. And this time, instead of going, sorry, I'm in the way of people. This time, instead of going back to the corpora quadrigemina, we're going to go forward or anterior to the thalamus. So find the thalamus real quick. It's just this big circular section. The thalamus. Okay. And then just inferior to that is going to be the hypothalamus. So make sure we can identify thalamus and hypothalamus with our partner toolkit. Thalamus, hypothalamus. Don't forget, hypo literally means yeah. below. Like hypothermia is like the low in the body. Thalamus, hypothalamus. <laughs> thalamus, hypothalamus is low body. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because this would be like the palm. Moving on to the next structure class, the, I'd like you guys to, with your partner, and she will take a second, identify the fornix and the corpus callosum. Fornix. Okay, yeah, find those two real quick. Corpus callosum. Trace it with your probe. So, you fornix. Fornix would be like right up here. And then the corpus. Wait, what is this down here? That is. Fornix. Um, corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. Yeah. I don't even know how I say it. Yeah, it, it really is tomatoes. I just don't know what I like. It is Fornix, correct? It's kind of like colossal because it's like colossal. I think it's not going to say my kids will just show called Dr. Thunder and they're going to speak in front This is the Fornix. So I have to say I'm sorry, say again. Fornix. Fornix. And then this is the Fornix colossal. Next thing, students is going to be the fluid-filled spaces on either side between the fornix and the corpus callosum. These are going to be our lateral ventricles. Okay, make sure we can identify these on either side. One side is going to have a membrane on it more than likely, unless you cut literally perfectly down the middle and destroyed it. Um, and that is going to be called the septum pellucidum. Okay, so find the lateral ventricles and that septum pellucidum on your brain tabs. Lateral um, ventricle septum pellucidum. So lateral ventricle septum pellicinum. Yeah. That seems really good. Lateral ventricle septum pellicinum. So this is really nice. This will see. Okay. So let's do that again. This is the fornix right here, right? Yep. Fornix. And then this is the corpora. Or okay, what's this right here in between them? What's corporis, between the fornix? The corporis quadriculum. Septum pellicidum. Yeah, which is up over now. That's this one here. Septum pellicidum. Right. And this one is a? Fornix. And this one is a? I can't remember. We found the lateral ventricles. Those are separated, of course, by the septum pellicidum. We should be good with that. The next thing we need to identify, or I'll give you guys the last three. Third ventricle is going to sit just below the fornix, right? Superior, inferior to the fornix, superior to the thalamus. Okay. We need to identify the aqueduct of Silvius, aka the cerebral aqueduct. Don't forget, it does not go around the corpora quadrigemina. It goes. Anterior, right? We're going to consider the, the, the corpus quadrigemina. Like, 
And that leads so finally he, to the last like thing, which is like, right where I'm pointing. If this is isn't right here, you could probably see, okay, see, see how yeah. it has like a little indent. Yeah. That goes down. Third country for <laughs> Kind of looks like that one. I miss if we didn't have this piece right here. <laughs> I agree. What's on top of here? This is the phoenix. Yeah, it's like Kapoor's quad Kapoor's 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 You guys have shown this, you've done this, what's this? That is the, uh, is that little aqueduct. Aqueduct. Sorry, aqueduct. 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 Civilis. Okay. So. Spinal cord. Where's the medulla oblongata right here? It'd be this part right here. So it's underneath the tree. All right, students. Yeah. And then your pons is this That's little. That's it for the brain. So what we're going to do is give you guys 10 minutes. So we're going to reconvene at 6.50. Maybe a little bit more than 10 minutes. And I'd like you guys to... This isn't a break. I would like you guys to go through the whole thing with yeah. your partner and actually run through the 